Fertility Treatment Employment Rights Bill. Now. now. And I call Nikki uh, Aiken to move the second reading. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Fertility treatment affects hundreds of thousands of people from all ethnicities and socio-economic backgrounds. Infertility, infertility <laughs> does not discriminate. It is emotionally draining, costly, risky and a very long process. You could go through multiple cycles before conceiving and quite often you fail to conceive at all. According to the latest figures from the UK Fertility Regulator, the Human Fertilisation and Embryology Authority, it takes on average three cycles of IVF to achieve success. Cycles can be unpredictable and women have to deal with the symptoms, the risks of complications and the day-to-day -day practicalities such as self-injecting with hormones. Undergoing fertility treatment is difficult at the best of times, but un undergoing treatment while juggling a job is particularly tough. Unlike employment legislation for pregnancy, maternity and paternity, there is no enshrined <coughs> legislation that compels employers to give time off work for fertility treatment or even any in initial consultation. Women are, of course, protected from pregnancy-related unfair treatment and discrimination throughout the protected period. In the case of other fertility treatments, however, this protected period will only begin at the implantation stage, not before. And in practice, there is little recourse to legal, medical, practical and emotional support for both men and women undergoing fertility treatment. This leaves people, Mr Deputy Speaker, vulnerable to unfavourable treatment or dismissal during the early stages of treatment without any legal recourse. This reflects a significant gap in the law, one which has, I hope, my bill will address. Well, she give way. Of course. Well, I, I thank my honourable friend for giving way, and I really congratulate her on the, this bill, which is in the best tradition of uh, private members' bills Fridays, because it doesn't affect that many of any of our constituents, but those it does affect, it really affects quite profoundly and so I realise we don't have much time today and I do hope she can make more progress on another occasion but I just wanted to wish her well and also congratulate her on the work she has done with employers to voluntarily adopt some of the principles in her bill. I thank my uh, honourable, honourable friend the member for uh, uh, Newcastle underline because he's absolutely right it, it, you know there, there is a small percentage of people who are affected by fertility treatment when you look at the whole uh, the whole population, but for those people, it's so important that we do support them through quite often a very difficult time. I will. I will. <laughs> <laughs> I thank my member friend for uh, giving way uh, briefly. I, I just wanted to thank her for bringing in this bill. It's so important, to so many. But ultimately, the point you just made, or that she just made, is about the uh, the stresses as well and when you're going through IVF I know for many constituents I've spoken to it's a very challenging period emotionally and actually knowing they've got the surety of time off work to be able to do that is going to make a huge difference to many of them thank you for doing this I thank my honourable friend the member for Watford for his intervention and I'd also like to put on uh, put, 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 put on this on, on the record in this place his support when he was the minister at Bayes um, for, for the time he gave me to discuss my private member's bill. I certainly will. We're very close on time, but as the, my honourable my friend has just said, it doesn't affect everybody across our constituencies, but it does affect some, my constituents that she knows has been in contact with her. But that doesn't matter. If there's one, a thousand or ten thousand, if something is wrong, and this place is the place that we should put it right. Mm -hmm. I thank my honourable friend for his intervention. He's right, and I have I have I've been in contact with his constituent who contacts me via his office, and I'd like to thank his office also for the support that they have given me for this private members' bill. Um, I think that the data from uh, the organisations that I've been working with, amongst them, is Fertility Matters at Work, and their uh, recent uh, research showed that a third of people currently going through IVF treatment have considered leaving their job rather than have to face possible workplace discrimination.
Their findings also indicated that many do not feel comfortable even discussing IVF treatment openly with their employer or their work colleagues and so struggle through the journey largely unsupported. I thank the Honourable Lady for giving way and she's making an excellent speech on a very important issue which means so much to so many of our constituents. I would really like to commend her for her, her work both with employers and in bringing the bill here today. I thank the uh, Shadow Minister for his support and I'd also like to put on record the support that I've received from across the House and particularly from my uh, right honourable uh, friend, I call her my, uh, my honourable friend, but the member for Pontypridd, who has been particularly supportive of me and my bill because I know of her personal journey she's had. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, but, but, but I have, I have been really, really touched by the support I've had from every, uh, every political party in this place. Going back to the research that, um, that uh, Fertility Matters at Work carried out, some said that the, who, they, uh, who they surveyed, some said that they feared by undertaking uh, fertility treatment it would be held against them and that they wouldn't be considered for the next promotion or they would face redundancy. And when they did have a conversation with their employers, many felt that it was used against them during future opportunities and progressions in their company. And I have to say, Mr Deputy Speaker, what I've found on my own journey into uh, looking at uh, the rights behind those who undertake fertility treatment, the number of particularly women who have contacted me from all across the country, who have said the same thing every time, that they felt once it was out in the open that they were undertaking fertility treatment or even thinking about it, that, that, they, that they were sidelined for a promotion, that they didn't get that extra project that they'd been hoping for because they may not be around so much. Um, I have actually came to this subject thanks to um, a constituent of mine who has to remain anonymous, I'm afraid, because of her situation that she had with her own employer based in the City of London. Of course. I just very briefly want to congratulate my honourable friend for securing this bill and and just reconfirm that the, the present minister will be working very closely with her, as did the, the previous minister, the member for Watford, but in particular congratulate her on the Fertility Workplace Pledge, which I think she's just about to go on to. I thank the minister uh, for her warm words and for the minister who's responsible for employment law, because he has been extremely supportive and met with me and discussed it. Um, but, my, uh, but my constituent, who um, ended up having uh, to sign an NDA, uh, I was not allowed to speak about this, um, felt that, the, her, that what, what, what she uh, experienced had to be righted for the next uh, generation of women and that's why I'm delighted to be working with her and also with Fertility uh, Matters at Work and also with Fertility Network UK who have all been so supportive of me. And the Minister is uh, right to say that as well as this uh, PMB, the Private Members Bill that I'm trying to get through Parliament, I have also launched a um, voluntary scheme called the Fertility Workplace Pledge. And many of you may have, um, have heard of it because I invited many of you to take part in it. And it's about encouraging employers to do the right thing, not have to wait for the law to change, but to do the right thing now, to, uh, al to allow line managers to be trained to understand what fertility treatment means, support people when they're going through it, have a fertility ambassador, have fertility policies, and also work with the employee to try and give them the flexibility they need in their workplace if they are undergoing treatment. I'm delighted that the House of Commons has signed up to my workplace pledge, Nat West Bank, the co-op, uh, Channel 4. Other banks are available. Uh, other banks are available. Many, many... <laughs> other many, TV channels are available. <laughs> many, many different uh, law firms, including Burgess, uh, uh, me, the uh, family law firm, and Natalie Sunderland, who has been an amazing advocate for uh, fertility uh, policies in the workplace. And I pay tribute to all these amazing organisations. And if honourable members would like to... Uh, in, to persuade their own employers in their constituencies to sign up to the Workplace Pledge, please talk to me because we have plenty of information. Order. Order. Debate to be resumed what day? Uh, December the 9th. December the 9th.